um, the reason for developing this connector and what problem it will solve is, let's say project operations and business rental are two disintegrated systems as we all know, and there's no out of the box integration between the two systems. And uh, due to this, the entries need to be uh, passed into two separate systems. And hence we felt the need that uh, in order to do this seamlessly and not to miss out on any erroneous data or any unbilled um, invoices or any transactions, uh, that should not happen. Hence, uh, there is a need to for data to be flowing between the two systems reliably and seamlessly. Hence, the goal of this implementation is to automatically connect the uh, accounting process uh, to the project management process uh, seamlessly. And the impact of this integration will be that uh, it will reduce human errors and uh, you'll not uh, miss any invoices to be billed by the customers, ensuring that you're able to bill on time. So just a few things before I start um, about this presentation that uh, we'll be showing a slideshow presentation in order to uh, not lose the track of the flow of the demo and um, in order to also you know see how data flows between the two systems. There will be a back and forth between project operations and business central um, as I talk through the slides and um, towards the end we also have some uh, CloudFront's developed reports because we these are some of the reports that we use ourselves and for our customers as well and these are indicative of what data or what reports are relevant uh, as a result of this integration so you know um, so what will be covered in this uh, webinar is uh, we'll be covering the sales process in project operations project management in project operations and business central resource allocation and time entries uh, material consumption invoicing and reporting so I hope everyone is set and I'll begin with the slideshow presentation. So as you can see, um, we have a lead here. This lead is Arthur Smith from Green Spaces Construction. Given that uh, the audience here today um, on the call having awareness about project operations and business central in general. So I'll probably breeze past some of the terminologies uh, quickly without getting into much of the details of the platform itself. So in your project operations, um, in the sales cycle, you have this lead called as Arthur Smith, and he's from Green Spaces Construction, and they're looking uh, to for resources and some uh, materials for the parking lot uh, construction. So let's the salesperson takes this lead forwards and creates an opportunity out of it and fills out the rest of the information that is relevant and uh, further moves it to develop stage. Now, when you qualify a lead, uh, project operations or CRM, Predominantly, it creates um, an opportunity, a contact, and uh, an account records within CRM. And what happens here is when these things happen, we are synchronizing account and contact to Business Central. Now, as you see, this is the opportunity, and this is the account in uh, project operations. But I can, you can see here that we have a couple of fields here, which shows what the Business Central customer number is and what the contact number is. Uh, it means that they have gone to Business Central so this is what the customer in Business Central looks like. And this is the contact in project operations, which then syncs over to Business Central. And this is what the uh, contact in Business Central looks like. So this is a two-way sync uh, data between the two applications flow if you make any changes to contacts and accounts. Further, you nurture uh, the lead forward. Uh, and you start to add the quotation on the opportunity. Once you add a quote, and uh, you fill in all the basic details, uh, then you start to populate the quote lines. So for the simplicity of this uh, webinar example, I've kept it this as a fixed bid, um, and I will start to populate this quote. You need to activate the quote, and I'll mark it as one, so that it will create an order, and then I will populate the order for rest of the um, uh, project base lines and product lines. So this order is created here, now let me go to the order line and uh, I've added some estimate and let me create a project here. So once you are able to tag a project in um, the order line, if I click, click on new project, I will fill out all the project details and I'll save and close. So what happens is when you create a project here, it will go over to business central as a project header. So now again, um, the integration is taken over the project to business central as well. Now I will go ahead and complete the rest of my order lines. Um, I've completed the fixed price, whatever I need to put here. 
and I've also added a few materials that are to be used on this project that is concrete and paper blocks. Further, I will go ahead and populate my project. Um, I will populate all my WBS. Uh, my tasks are in here and I will start to uh, assign the resources on the project as well. So um, before it before I take you to business center and how it looks, um, just wanted to show you this Gantt chart as well. Again, this is in project operations. So now since my project tasks and the resource assignments are here in business central, they'll go over as project planning lines under the project. Now, when I come back to project operations, uh, because I assigned resources on the project task, my estimated labor cost populated here. The same estimated labor cost will also go ahead and populate in business central as well. Now I wanted to add some material estimates on this project uh, because I'm going to use paper blocks and concrete. I have added it under material estimates. Um, I have, you know, a vendor invoice for this separately, uh, but continuing when I add the material estimates here, they'll also go over to business central um, under project planning lines as type items. Now I'll uh, come back to project operations. I'll see because I added material estimates, my estimated material costs have populated here and the same will be synced over to business central as well. So this way your project has, um, you know, sync between the two systems. Now, because I added some material estimates um, in project operations, you can uh, set up your subcontracts where you want to procure some materials for. So let's say I have this um, subcontracted created in project operations and I have two subcontracting lines because I want to procure some materials. I'll add them here as subcontract lines and I will then go ahead and uh, complete the verification because I want to then, you know, uh, confirm the invoice. So once my verification for both um, the lines are completed, I will ensure that my verified amount matches my invoice amount. And then I will finally uh, confirm this vendor invoice. So when I confirm this vendor invoice, this vendor invoice goes over to Business Central as the purchase order with all the um, line details in that. And then I can decide to post it. When I post it, it will go under vendor ledger entries. And you can then, you know, select that invoice and then make a payment against it. So when you do that, um, a payment record will be made and you can then uh, decide to post that under payment journal. And when that happens, when you make a payment against that, uh, you will see again a payment line has been added to the vendor ledger entries. Now this syncs between, you know, can project operations and business central um, in order. Next part is to uh, the sync between the time entries and expense entries and material consumption. Uh, so I'll breeze past one of uh, some of the um, items that we do in project operations. So let's say any team member has to work on a project. Um, Typically, they will be allocated on the project. So in this case, um, if I am the resource and uh, I am allocated on um, this project, let's say, you know, 9, 10th and 11th, I'll go to my time entries because let's say I finished working um, on this project and I want to make my time entries. There are different options to import time entries. And uh, once I click on import bookings, I will have my time entries uh, available to import. Um, I'll choose the ones that I need to make time entries for. And I will have it here. I'll go ahead, I'll complete my time entries, add all my comments, and then I'll decide to submit that. So when I submit my time entries, the project approver in this case uh, will see the, pro the time entries that have to be approved. So let's say I'm the project approver in this case, I'll select all the time entries and click on approve. So in project operations, when you approve, um, the project approval records, which is time entries and expense entries, they create actual records in project operations. So our integration takes the approved time entries over to business central under project journals. So now my approved time entries have gone over to uh, business central and the time entries on the number of hours and my unit cost and uh, sales price, all those are also synced over. Then, um, I will see that the actual costs have started to roll up here in business central. And you will see that because I, uh, you know, posted those time entries, I'll, they'll come under all the uh, project ledger entries. Now, similar to time entries, you can also do expense entries. 
um, like on this project um, now i'm as a, i'm logged in as a project manager and uh, because i want to do um, a site survey and analysis i will travel to the site so i want to add an expense here so i have entered a 200 dollar expense here just like time entries i have also submitted this expense entry so when i submit this expense entry the project approver in this case again me uh, i will go ahead and approve this expense entry and it will also go over to project journals in business central under the gl account so this gl account is something that is comes as a part of configuration and you can decide uh, which gl account it can go under uh, of type expense then you can decide to post this journal uh, this project journal entry when you post this journal entry it will go under the project uh, ledger entries of again type gl account now you have done time entries that's in your approved time entries got synced into business central uh, your approved expense entries got synced into business central as well um, similarly again the material usage is also will, will be synced to business central now the way we do it is again you go ahead and uh, create your material usage logs um, so i'm consuming all the materials uh, that i wanted to uh, in this case and I'll have both the materials in um, i'll select both the materials i'll submit it for approval the project approver in this case will just like time entries and expense entries select both material usage as well and click on approve now in project operations they'll approve the material usage they also will be uh, sent over to business central other under the project journals of type item and then um, we can choose to post it and once you post it again both these materials are also uh, registered under project ledger entries now you will see uh, the actuals for the materials uh, also start to populate in project uh, in business central because you have consumed some materials so that was the main uh, transactional data taken over between uh, project operations and business central along with the master data setup like bookable resources um, zip codes um, and price list now next we'll move to invoicing um, as i had shown in the beginning of this webinar to keep it simple i had a fixed price um, a contract line and uh, because it because it's a fixed price it comes with two milestones so in my project operations under the order line or the contract line i have made one invoice schedule as ready to invoice and once i do that i get the option to create an invoice in project operations now because this is a pro forma invoice i ensure that everything here is correct and this invoice is ready to be sent over to business central so i choose to confirm that invoice so once you confirm the invoice it goes over to business central as a sales invoice you'll see all the line items that were included also uh, get sent over and then you can choose to uh, decide to post that invoice i'll do a posting of the invoice and you can see that uh, the posted invoice then comes under customer ledger entries in business central and that's how the integration um, goes back and forth uh, between project operations and business central and uh, also i just wanted to demonstrate on uh, how the error handling takes place so the error handling takes place in uh, project operations side um, when the when this integration is in place into any of the environments there is a separate section called as um, integration configuration which has the options to configure your country codes uh, address zip code gl accounts um, any other configuration related to um, the credentials and everything then uh, you have error logs as well so you know you can open up any one of the errors log and see that if there's anything missing in as a part of um, the setup um, that should have been already there um, in case there are errors so that's how uh, error handling uh, is taken care in project operation side of things so that's the main integration here and um, as i mentioned in the beginning of this webinar we also have some suggestive reports uh, which you can embed in teams as well uh, but these are all in power bi and these are some of the reports that uh, that leverage uh, project operations and uh, gives you insights of what type of uh, metrics matter uh, and one of the important ones is let's say the project profitability so because you know every professional services organization uh, or who are using business center and project operations want to look at the project's profitability so we have a this report where you can see all the uh, projects and what has the total expenses cost uh, it has incurred uh, against the contract value and you can you know drill through the report and see 
uh, what all invoices uh, exist and under it. This will give you an idea of which of the projects are being profitable uh, versus uh, the ones that are not. Then we have another report called as uh, the AR aging report. Um, it happens that you know you have raised invoice to your customers, but they uh, didn't pay you uh, within the time frame, and you can set your matrix as to uh, how many days have passed and which ones should be first taken care of. So this is the air aging report. Then you have the project uh, invoice schedule report. Um, it happens that if the uh, accounting team uh, or the project management team also, uh, if they're supposed to raise invoices, but they don't, um, they happen to miss it. But this report will um, indicate that if any of the milestones, uh, the invoices have not been raised or not. So this report indicates the blue, green ones that we have raised and the ones that are pending and upcoming. And this is the billable allocation report. Um, what this report suggests is uh, if you have resources, you need to be able to look into the future and tell that if there are any resources whom you can assign certain projects, or uh, maybe cross train them or see if you're having any um, um, over, over hiring issues. So as you can see that this team, uh, this report is embedded into teams. So uh, it can be rightly shared with the right uh, project management team and you know they can look at all the um, allocations 